But where's the dawah? The Christians are there, they're boasting there are 10 million Christians. They say there are 20 million. The Christians are boasting that there are 20 million Coptic Christians in Egypt. The Muslims say no, there are only 10 million. I say it's worse. If it's 10 million, it's worse. Because the 10 million has got you under such control, if 20 million had you, I might sympathize a little with you. But the 10 million, what they're doing to you, what they have done to you, absolutely emasculated you, castrated you like oxen, oxen, bell, bell, banadi, sapu. I go to the Dawa conference. I am promised that visa will be waiting for me when I arrive there. Mr. Didat, you don't have anything to worry about. I said, look, I'm a South African. You know, people, they don't like me because of my passport. It's not my fault. What can I do? I said, no, no, you have nothing to worry about. We'll have visas waiting for you. So I land in Cairo, Al Qahira. And the man from the Al-Azhar, he comes and takes me from the aeroplane. Quick, 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 there are people there before me in the queue. He leaves that queue one side and he takes me right to the front, to the counter. So I'm getting VIP treatment. <laughs> and I stand there waiting. He takes my passport and my son's passport and he goes. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. The queue is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> Eventually the queue is finished, but I'm still there. <laughs> I, I was the VIP. Then he tells me, right, you sit down, Mr. Didat, you wait. I said, all right, I sit down, wait. He comes after another half an hour and says, look, here is a lady here, she will now attend to you. I said, shukra. So she goes, and she comes back. She said, look, wait for half an hour. I said, I'll wait for an hour, wait for two. I have nothing else to do now. So she comes after an hour, he says, $40. I said, for what? He says, visas. I said, I'm a guest of the government. He said, $40. $20 for your son, $20 for you. So I paid her $40. I gave her, she went and paid. Now, this was an Egyptian lady. Well-dressed, well-spoken, good English, but from the tongue I can make out that she is Egyptian. Means Arab, you know, the Arab accent is there. So when everything is done, I'm asking her in my own funny Arabic. I say, my ismuki, I hope I'm not murdering the language. My ismuki, what is your name? So she gives me a name, which I can't remember. You see, something I never heard in my life before. See, the human mind, you need something to, to lean on to, pigeonhole with. You can't just, something from thin air, you hear something, it can't be retained. You have to pigeonhole somewhere. There's no pigeonhole for that word, word she told me. Then I'm asking her, Anta Muslima? She says, no, I'm a Christian. So I'm telling her, I says, you know, Jesus Christ, before he parted, look, this is means our customer. A Muslim must be looking for opportunity for delivering the message. Anybody, everybody, anytime, every time. That's our primary duty. The primary duty of the Muslim is to deliver the message. Look for an excuse. And if you are looking for an opportunity, before one can say Jack Robbins, you got it. If that is what you want to do. You want to deliver the message? In so many innocent ways, you can get going. So I said, you know, Jesus Christ, before he parted, he said, knowing she is an Egyptian Christian woman, I uh, quoted her from the Arabic Bible, which I had taken a little trouble to learn. So, La kinni akulu lakum ul haqqo, innahu khairu lakum, in antalika, li allahu illa mantalik, la yatikum ul muazzi, walakin in zahabtu ursilhu ilaykum. I didn't translate it for her, because she understood what I said. She was an Egyptian Christian lady. She understood. But for the benefit of my brethren who don't know Arabic, what I said was from the Gospel of St. John in the Christian Bible, chapter 16, verse 7, where it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. It is expedient for you. It is better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. That is what I told her in Arabic. So I'm asking her, who is this Muazzi? She says, I don't know. So I said, you see, in the Holy Quran, we are told that before he parted, Jesus, before he parted, he said, Wa mubashiram bi rasulin yati min ismuhu Ahmad. And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. And Muhammad is Muazzi. She says, funny, these Egyptians, meaning the Muslims, 
the Muslim Egyptian. He said, these Egyptians, they take us to the dance, they take us to the cinema, but nobody tells us about Muazzi. <laughs> Look, before I can get out of the airport, she gives me a sledgehammer to beat my brethren. So as soon as I meet them, the elite, the elite, the educated class in the hotel, five-star hotel. I said, Akhi, look, I just met a lady, Egyptian lady, and this is what she told me. Is it true? So he said, yes. I meet another guy. I said, look, an Egyptian lady told me this at the airport. Is it true? He said, yes. You take them to the cinema, you take them to the dance, but you don't tell them anything about Deen. Amazing. 1,400 years, you have not made even a scratch on the Christian community. Not even a scratch. We Muslims are there from then. And the children and the children's children, we are there. That's what Muslim, what you are. 40 million, what 40 million? This 40 million are there, the children of the old Muslims that are there. Your procreation, procreation, you know. That's what you are, 40 million, if you are 40 million. The 10 million are the children of those that were there for 1,400 years. They have been immune to any change. You have not been able to make even a scratch. Why? So I'm asking, I'm asking my Egyptian brethren in Egypt. I said, Ya Akhi, you read the Quran? He said, yes. In Arabic? He said, yes. You understand? He said, of course. He understands the Quran in Arabic. Yes, he understands. Unlike my people, we non-Arabs, we read for sawab, blessings. You know that? And I believe we will get the blessings. You know what we go through in Ramadan, Taravi? Hmm? The longest prayer of the day, Isha. Then after that, followed by two Nafil Sunnah. Then we do 20 Taravi. Then we do three Witar. And then we do two again Nafil. <laughs> Can you imagine? What an ordeal we are going through. More especially the non Arab. He doesn't underst understand one word. You know that? Even if it's half of the Quran, he's Qari in my country. Poor man, he doesn't understand a word, but he's going through the ordeal. And everybody, very disciplined. You know, is the non-Muslim sees a fantastic people. These are angels all. No nation on earth can go through that discipline. No nation on earth, except the Muslim. But the poor man, not one word. If that fellow only knew that this guy, you know, 100% of them, they're going up and down, up and down, up and down, and they don't understand one word. <laughs> so it's a great miracle still. Can you imagine this miracle? Hundred percent of the people, they go through the whole month of Ramadan, we, we I, me, including myself, we go through the ordeal and don't understand one word. That's the position. But you Egyptians, I said, you understand? He said, yes. I said, Allah is telling you in your language. More directly addressed to you, addressed to all, but more directly to you because you understand the message. He says, Ya Halal Kitab, O people of the book, La taghlu fi dinikum. Say, do not go to extremes in your religion. Ya Halal Kitab, O Jews and Christians, do not go to extremes in your religion. Wala taqulu alallah illa al-haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Inna mal Masih, most certainly the Messiah. Isa ibn Maryama, Jesus the son of Mary. Rasulullah is a messenger of Allah. Wa kalimatuhu, and a word proceeding from him. Al-Qaha ila Maryamu wa ruhum minhu. Which he bestowed upon Mary and a word proceeding from him. Fa'aminu billahi wa rasulihi. So believe in Allah and his messenger. I said, did you tell them that? You Egyptians, I said, did you tell your Christian fellow countrymen this? He said, no. So Allah says in the Holy Quran, Don't say Trinity. 